So Behaviour have just announced the developer update for March 2024. So here's some of the big changes that are coming. They're going to come to the PTB first, and then once that's been tested, they're going to go live normally two weeks after the PTB. So the big one is a major update to the Twins Killer, a minor update to Blight. Uh, we've also got a medium update to the Haddonfield map. And then Perks, we've got a medium update to Ultimate Weapon, Adrenaline, and a minor update to Decisive Strike. There's also some new features around the store, removed D-pips, and archives improvements. So the major one is the Twins. So what they've done with this, the, the Twins are one of the lowest pick rate killers. So they, they're one of the killers that is played the least by out of all killers. So whether this update will do much to uh, improve that and make the Twins more playable, it sounds promising. A lot of people are, are looking very excited about these changes, so let's have a quick look. So they've reduced the time it takes to switch back to Charlotte from 3 seconds down to 1.5, reduced the time it takes to unbind Victor to 0.75 seconds instead of 1 second, reduced the time it takes to charge Victor's pounce to 0.85 seconds instead of 1 second, then they've added the new ability to recall Victor at any point while he's unbound. They've also added an ab ability to change between Victor and Charlotte near a hooked survivor, which you couldn't do before. But it does say, be warned, the anti-face camp meter will still fail if you're too close. They say they've made, it, made switching between Charlotte and Victor more responsive and given the killer the ability to recall Victor at any time so they feel better to play. They've also updated seven add-ons. It doesn't say what they are in this, though. Victor's Pounce no longer latches onto healthy survivors, so they need to be injured first. Victor can no longer be kicked after successful pounces which do not latch onto a survivor. And then new, Victor's Pounce now latches onto survivors when they're put into the dying state. Other survivors can crush Victor during this to help the dying survivor. Victor will automatically return to Charlotte after 20 seconds. While Victor is attached to a survivor, or holding a survivor in a locker, Charlotte gains a 10% haste effect. This effect will be lost prematurely if Charlotte hits a survivor. They've removed a feature where survivors near Victor while he is latched onto another survivor are no longer revealed by Killer Instinct. Previously, the twins' power heavily encouraged slugging, leaving survivors in the dying state, since Victor could chain together pounces on multiple injured survivors, but only pounce a single healthy one. Furthermore, survivors could often save each other before Charlotte could make it to them. We flip this around, so now Victor will now be much more effective at injuring multiple survivors and instead assist Charlotte, who now moves faster while Victor is latched on in picking up the survivor. This makes it possible for Victor to both injure and down a survivor without being forced to switch back to Charlotte in between. The visual terror radius accessibility setting will now include Victor's grunts and Victor will now glow red whenever he is vulnerable to being crushed. A minor update to the blight where they've improved collision detection to reduce cases where the blight slides off objects. It could be frustrating to slide off an object you were trying to bump into and end your rush prematurely. We've improved the collision detection to make the blight's rush more consistent. This also fixes an issue which allowed the blight to incorrectly slide along obstacles and lunge around tight corners, tighter corners than intended. And the Haddonfield map, medium update to this map. So they've updated the map layout and reduced the overall size. They've reduced the length of hedges and fences to create more openings. They've adjusted various houses to reduce the strength of strong loops. They've reduced the number of houses on the map. All remaining houses can be entered. It says many houses were closed off, making the map larger without any room for gameplay. We've reduced the number of houses that spawn, though each one that remains will now be open and playable. We've also reduced the strength of some of the strongest window loops to be fairer and more interesting to play. They've added pallets and lockers along the edge of the map. They've update, updated street tiles to feature more pallet loops and adjusted pallet loops in park tiles. The outdoor areas were fairly empty before, encouraging survivors to make a run for the nearest house when they were chased. Since we've reduced the strength of houses, we've added some additional loops to the street and edges of the map to spread out chases and reduce dead zones. Then a minor update to Decisive Strike 
increased stun duration to 5 seconds from 3 seconds, added a new stabbing animation when decisive strike is used successfully. The survivor is locked in place for part of the stun while they are being dropped by the killer, so it didn't leave them with much time to run away once they hit the ground. We have increased the duration of the stun to give the survivor a fair chance to create some distance. While we're at it, we've added a new animation which plays with when a survivor successfully uses decisive strike to break free to give some visual flair to the perk. Adrenaline. Adrenaline no longer activates if you're hooked when the gates are powered. Reduced speed boost to 3 seconds from 5 seconds. Adrenaline no longer causes you to wake up when facing the nightmare. Adrenaline had a lot of exceptions which made it difficult to play around. If a survivor was hooked when the hate their exit gates were powered, they would be healthy and received a substantial speed boost upon being unhooked, making it very difficult for the killer to catch them before they could escape. We've made it so adrenaline no longer pauses when you're on the hook. We've also removed the wake-up effect when facing the nightmare to clean up the perk as we moved away from perks that affect specific killer powers over the years. Then ultimate weapon now reveals survivors aura instead of causing them to scream. Reduced activation time to 15 seconds from 30. Increased cooldown to 80, 70 and 60 was 40, 35 and 30. Ultimate weapon was a jack of all trades, providing both information and consistent way to interrupt survivors, allowing it to synergize too well with other perks. Rather than screaming, survivors will instead have their aura revealed. This means it will no longer interrupt survivors' actions, although survivors won't know they're being revealed revealed to the killer. Since ultimate weapon is easy to activate, it was possible to keep its effect active throughout the entire match. We've increased the cooldown and decreased its activation window to ensure some downtime between uses. Minor update to emblems, remove the ability to lose a pip. With emblems being used solely for monthly rewards these days, it felt needlessly punishing to lose a pip after a rough match. This quality of life change will make the emblem system less stressful. This also applies to modifiers. You can enjoy these limited time modes without worrying about your grade. And the store, a major update to the store. A visual overhaul to the en entire store menu. Added specials tab to highlight items that are on sale. Collections tab to find cosmetics from a specific collection. Added bundles containing multiple items at a discounted price. Killer Mori animations can now be viewed in the store. Wow, so you can actually play Killer Mori animations in the store. Added a weekly gift that can be claimed for free. The store hasn't changed much since it was introduced in 2018. This update makes it easier to find what you're looking for and allows us to bundle together content at a reduced price. For example, it's now possible to purchase an entire DLC pack through the in-game store rather than purchasing each character separately. And then the archives, minor update, new tomes and their respective rifts will now open at the same time as the update. A new rift bundle option which grants the premium rift rewards and a 20 tier head start at a discounted price. So it says you can still buy the premium rift pass on its own or you can buy this bundle which is the rift pass and a 20 tier skip. So there's all the proposed changes. These will be coming to the PTB. Let me know in the comments what you think of these changes. Are they going to make you play the twins now? Or are you going to give it a go? Let me know what you think.